right um so this is a another attempt to go live and bring uh, mr gene on line um refresh so let me bring him back on and then we'll begin all over again Alright, so while I'm waiting for uh, Mr. Jing to come back online uh, or join this particular live video so that I can bring him on, <coughs> I'll just do a, a brief introduction again so that this can pan well for those who will be watching the replay later. So my name is BC Odawadi. I am your host here at the Business School for Interior Decorators. This is our June virtual chat. We've been discussing on the topic how to attract and retain paying clients consistently in your business and this month we're bringing in three different um, interior decorators and architects who have been in the business for more than five years and are doing wonderfully well in their businesses so uh, mr gene is one is the first speaker who is coming on this virtual chat he's supposed to be here on friday by 8 p.m but his um, work schedule had us um rescheduled his own um session to this morning and so this is um uh, his own pre-recorded or pre-event um interview so by the time this we finish this particular live session we would uh re play this particular video on friday at 8 p.m for those of us who cannot make it live today so um let me see if mr jane is online so that i can bring him on and then we'll begin Hi, um, Mrs. Remy. Thank you for joining in live. All right, so Mr. Jean is here, and I am bringing him on. Let's. Okay. All right. Oh boy, why? So I, I, I'm getting a an alert here telling me that I can't bring him on camera, and I don't know why. So please um, hold on. Let me see. What's this? Let's wait for uh, Mr. Jin to accept the invite. Thank you guys for bearing with me. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the delay and all the connection issues. All right, so, okay. Welcome back, Mr. Jin. Can you hear me clearly? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I can. Very, very well. My apologies, please. My apologies. I don't know what, um, what this happened. This is better. Okay. I'm good. Yes, yes. Okay. So because we have to restart, I'll have to do everything all over again. I hope you don't mind. That, that's fine. Right. Right. Okay. So um, a brief introduction of our guest today is, um, his name is Architect Jane. He's a trained architect, a certified architect, and also, uh, and also an interior designer um he has about 12 years in, um, experience in this building industry and he holds both a bsc and an msc in um, architecture from the university of nigeria in super uh he's a member of the interior designers association of nigeria and he founded the space caliber limited which is his own um, interior design firm, so it's an, it's an architectural firm and also an interior design firm, founded in, in 2004 in Lagos, Nigeria, and they specialize in interior design and fitting out, building construction, and um, custom-made furniture. He's also the founder and the, uh, let's say you're the head instructor at the Design Academy uh, that 
created 10 years, almost 11 years ago, or more than 11 years ago. Um, the, um, the institute is known as, uh, sorry, the academy is known as the Caliber Institute, and they have produced excellent interior designers over the last 10 to 11 years. Some of them are members of this um, community. One of them is live here with us right now. Mrs. Remy Ademujimi is a product of the Institute. I am also a product of the Institute. Joy of Jamie Furniture is a product of the Institute and uh, many others that are here. Mm -hmm. in so Mr. Jean also loves art and photography. Before the uh, initial video went off, he was telling us how he got into interior design or how he got, in, got into architecture from his love of art and so we begin already so that you can hear from him directly all right so join me to welcome architect jean to our Jean virtual chat welcome sir thank you so much for um honoring our invitation thank you very much i really 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 appreciate it thank you you know like i told right, you so about being this, but uh, i really appreciate it <laughs> i don't know why you're hiding away i keep telling you i don't know why you're hiding away <laughs> I know, I know that a lot of, a lot of uh, shots in the industry are not um, social media savvy like that. So they, 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 they have their businesses on social media, but they don't spend their time on social media. Yes. So, so we are learning from the best. All right. So one of this particular chat is to uh, bring in industry experts like you to come talk to us on the topic attracting and retaining paying clients because I have observed you. Okay, so I've known you for a little over one year now and I have um how will I call it now? I've monitored you closely. So I've learned under under your um, teaching and I've also um maintained a relationship with you. So Mr. Jane is somebody that I can always run to when I um um at the stumbling at the roadblock or I don't even know how to go a, a, about figuring out a design project. So, um, so Mr. Jean is here to tell us about all about his um, company or all about his design business and how he has been able to attract and retain his own kind of client. Which, when I say his own kind of client, I'm talking about ideal clients, paying clients. All right. So, Mr. Jean, I will begin by telling you to give us an introduction of how you found yourself in architecture. So, for the sake of this video being a, a um, another. Um, or another recording. So let us know how you found yourself in architecture and interior design itself. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is, I, I appreciate it. Uh, very interesting question. Uh, the thing is, it, it's, not, it's not anything complex. Um, right from secondary school, uh, I'm actually an artist, like you mentioned. I guess that's why I was yeah. used for me to be also in photography. Yeah, I've always, I actually always liked to draw. Now, two of my elder brothers did art. They studied art in school. Now, my dad said, look, three of you will not go and study art. It doesn't really make any sense. Let these two study art. You do something science inclined. But I still loved art. So I, I wasn't prepared to get into medicine or engineering or something like that. So in our advice, why not... Um, do something that helps you combine science and art. And I thought, okay, well, since I love arranging spaces right from secondary school, then I used to come into a room and fix. I, I always loved before and after, including washing plates. So that wasn't really, it wasn't, I always loved before and after. I, I, I love to see a dirty kitchen and I'll fix it. And my mom will come and say, wow, how did you do this? I, really, I, I, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I love walking into a room that, wasn't well arranged. And then I arranged it. So I guess it was something that um, uh, gave me that feeling that I could do something in the line of interior design or architecture. So I spoke to my dad. He said, look, why not do architecture since it's a combination of science and art? art. So I said, okay, let me, let me give it a try. Yes, science and art. So, so, so I did. But while I was studying architecture, I was more inclined towards interior design. Okay. Because I've always okay. believed, yes, I've always believed that, okay, let's look at a building, for instance. What attracts you to a building? It's the look of the building. You know, we see something, we call it an edifice, it attracts us. But when you get to the edifice and you go inside, what keeps bringing you back is the interior, not the exterior. You've seen the exterior is attractive, you go there, you keep coming back. Let's take ShopRite, for instance. I don't know if I'm supposed to mention them. 
here. Going to shop right, what excites you and keeps bringing you back is the interior. When you get in there, the lighting, the color, and everything, it's, it's so exciting that each time you think of somewhere you can go and relax, it comes to your mind. So I, while I was in school doing architecture with my mates, I, I kept thinking about interior design. Right from my second year in architecture, I kept thinking interior design, something I liked. But as I did, it was, um, it was, um, I didn't get much encouragement. I'm not saying anything bad about the lecturers. They are all very nice people. I didn't get much encouragement because it wasn't something that was, should I use the word reeling as I did? When you mention interior design, people would say, ah, but that's a woman's cause. Why do you have to do something like that? So I was a little bit discouraged until when I moved to Lagos and, you know, I, I worked in a firm and I realized, wow, so I can actually, this dream of being an interior designer is something that I could realize. All right. Okay. Um, I'm, you, okay. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Very well. Okay. So I thought you were still talking. I'm trying to light up my um, video. It's looking very dark when I checked it on the system. That was, that was just my okay. hand. All right. So thank you. Uh, for that um, background that you've given us, I wish I had um, somebody to guide me like you. <laughs> no, I did not. If I had, what, what was on my mind when I was going to the university was to study computer engineering. And I was, as in, with the way it was difficult to gain admission, I was still adamant that that was what I was going to do. <laughs> I ended up studying computer science at the end of the day. All right, so um, you, you founded um, the Space Caliber Limited. Um, and you have been going strong since then. So um, I believe that the concept of ideal client is not new to you, right? No, it's not. It's All not. Right. I want you to um, help us understand or help us see why should we be, as in why ideal client? Everybody believes, I, I used to believe that too when I started my business, that everybody is my client. So why sell to a particular type of person or category of Clients. So why are you clients in itself? Okay, um, that's an interesting question. Uh, here is the thing. We have basically in this part of the world the private client and I'll call the corporate client. All right. There is nothing wrong with attaching yourself to anyone, really. If 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 you can choose to be inclined to corporate clients. Where I work before you know, starting off my own company, we are more into corporate design. Now, uh, what I noticed is that in corporate design, it's um, there was there's so much competition, and I love competition. I, I I like being involved in something. I like that win or lose thing. That's the truth. Now, I'm not trying to say anything bad about private client. I, I, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about private client, but. It's not, it's, not, it's, not the same. <laughs> it's not the same thing. When you're dealing with private clients, it's, it, it, the terrain is different. You know, it's, um, it, it, you can't, it's difficult to tell whether you actually have the job or some other person has the job or something like that. So it's a bit confusing. I've always loved corporate because corporate, you compete with other good interior designers. Well, there's nothing wrong in failing. There's nothing wrong in losing out. When you lose out, you find out why you lost. So that the next project you're chasing, you try to do better, which is something I've always believed in. That's what I love about corporate clients. The competition is really interesting. It gets you thinking because that's the, you know, I, I believe, I've always believed this. The major asset that an interior designer has is actually that skill. It's your skill. That's your major asset. It's your skill. So there's nothing wrong in competing with the best and then you lose. You try and find out why you lost. We've lost some, we have won some. Normally, when you win, of course, it pops and says, you think, uh, you know, you feel happy. I, usually, when you lose, everybody feels sad. But the truth is, you shouldn't feel that bad that you lost because it, it doesn't mean that you're not good in what you're doing. It just means that some other person was chosen because at that particular point, you provided something that the client prepared over yours. It could be budget. It may not necessarily be, you know, design. So I love corporate clients because I don't, I don't know how to say it. It's, it's, it's more straightforward dealing with corporate clients. You win or you lose. That's the thing. I'm sorry, your private clients, if you guys are listening, you guys are all wonderful people, but for public clients, you win or you lose. And that's it. And you know the funny thing, you see, usually when, when we lose, 
you learn so much. Because what, what we do is that when we lose, we usually call the client and we ask them, so please, why, why, don't be offended, but why, why did we lose out on this project? Is there, is, was it the price or something? There is no shame in asking clients. Mm. In the past, I didn't know how to do that because I'd be too upset. But now, as you, you know, as a more mature, what I do is that I call the client and I ask them, so please, why did we lose that? Was it design? Is it that they have something better? You know, no offense. Why we are doing that is that we want to learn so that the next client that we're dealing with, we know how to, you know, how to uh, 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 to what we have, which is very, very, very important. Okay, and look, I love talking, you know. If you leave me, I can talk from now to uh, tomorrow. So I need to know when. Uh, exactly, so I need to know when. Uh, you have asked that question and you have given us a, a brief training on what to do when you lose out on your <laughs> contract. And I love that. I love that you don't hold back when you want to. As in you, 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 I think um, if you're not an, an architect or an interior designer, maybe the, the, another thing you would do is be a teacher. You know how to share. From <laughs> All right. So, um, so there are so many ways to attract um, clients. There are many ways. One of the things that I learned from um, Space Cali uh, the, sorry, what did I call it now? The Caliber Institute. I, I mix your company and yeah. one of the things that really helped me and also kind of um, helped me to be more bold when going out to talk to clients or when I am approaching or trying to um, convert a prospective buyer is that uh, you should communicate. Um, what would I call it now? Communicate confidently. But apart from that, you talked about how to package yourself and take your proposal to these offices, submit it, and make sure that you um, talk to somebody who is of importance. When I say important, I'm talking yeah. about maybe the manager or something, so that your, your proposal don't end up in the bin or something. And then you also have like a, a <laughs> that, that you can follow up on to know, to just to bring yourself, as a, just remind them about what you've given them. So apart from going in person, yeah. talk to um, prospective buyers, can you tell us about three different other ways that, I've, that you've used in your business and has helped you to attract your ideal clients? So I know you're not a social media person. So if not, if, I, if we're asking me now, I'll tell you a lot of things. <laughs> that I don't do that. And that's one of the reasons why exactly. I'm well, well, on this particular chat. So yes. let's hear from you. Ways to yes. attract your ideal clients. Uh, but ideal clients. But you know the interesting thing? The major way to attract them is to go out there and find them because they are there. Yes, they are there. And always bear in mind that you are not the only person. That's the truth. When you're dealing with, I'm talking about corporate clients now, right? Then we can talk about private clients, you know, when I'm done. But for corporate clients, you have to go out there. That's where I talked about, uh, like we always talk about packaging your profile. It's very important. Package your profile. It doesn't matter whether you've done something or you haven't done something. It doesn't matter. Somebody will all you will always find somebody who will take that risk for you. That's the truth. So don't be looking at the very, very big companies. It doesn't matter. There will come a time where you have to compete with them. And you might just win when it comes to budget or prices or costing. You might win in that regard. You understand? But here is the thing. Above all things, I'm sorry, I, I may not be able to mention three because it's just one one that we are using. No, it's very, very, very all important. Right. Everything above all things, like yeah. uh, above all things, like I always say, before packaging yourself, you need designers need to learn. You need to build yourself. That's the truth. That's one mistake people make a lot. Each time when people come for training, the very first thing that comes to their mind is, or the very first thing they ask is, how do I get jobs? But the the problem is that if you don't prepare yourself, when the job comes, question is, how do you get it? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't prepare yourself, how do you get that? These jobs will always come. That's the truth. And remember that in the corporate world, the competition is really high. So if you go to a company and you have a product you're trying to sell to them, always bear in mind that they have two, three, four other people who are offering them products as well. So that has to keep you on your toes. That's the truth. So if what you have at the back of your mind before you start practice, how do I get jobs? It might be a little bit difficult. The thing that we should always think about first, how do I develop myself? That's the truth. So that anywhere you find yourself, you can talk. Usually when I, when I, when I explain things somewhere, people always ask for a complimentary card or, or 
phone number or something like that. Why? Mm. Because I try as much as possible in my own little ways to see how I can develop myself, no matter how small. It's very, very important. When you develop yourself, that is step one. Step two, you will now go out there and start making all the noise, letting them know, look, I've developed myself. I can do this, this thing for you. And when you keep making noise, they'll come and tell somebody to say, ah, this noise maker, oh, yeah, come, come and do this thing. Let's see how well you can do it. And they take a chance on you and you do it very well. Yeah. And the moment you do it well, they start calling you, you know, for more things. That's the beautiful thing about the corporate, uh, corporate industry or corporate plan. They, they, once you're giving them something that is good, it's decent, um, it's going to be difficult for them to leave you and go somewhere else, except some other person comes around and has something irresistible. Uh, then they can now call you and say, ah, uh, Mr. A, please come on. They are offering us this. So what can you do? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's, it, that was just the thing, going out to clients, going out to clients. Social media is good. It's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. But I, I noticed that um, for corporate clients, uh, they had me. They had, I could be wrong, though. Hey, look, I'm open to correction, but uh, they, I, the private clients are mainly the ones who enjoy going on social media. Or while they're on social media, they pick people. Now, the question is, how many times do you have representatives of corporate clients go on social media? Maybe playing around Instagram looking for who to pick. I don't, I don't think they do that. Like I said, if someone knows better, please, he or she can correct me. But I think for corporate clients, you go out there. You go out there to them. But please, before people start thinking about sourcing jobs, they should think about developing themselves. It's very, very, yeah. very important. That's because the competition, you will always meet competition anywhere you go. All right. So that, that was very, very excellent. Um, and you've also... Um, kind of um, explain you. question uh, so I'm still going to ask because I want to know if there are other ways so you mentioned when you um, when you were explaining just now okay. that do a job well yes. they retain you they get to call you for more jobs so apart from that particular as apart from, the, from doing a wonderful job and they are impressed which other way or what other ways do you retain your existing clients for repeat business so do you do any other thing apart from ensuring that you are give what when you're given an opportunity to to do a, a to execute a project you do it excellently well? So apart from that, what other um, practices or what other things do you do to retain your existing clients so that they can keep call, calling on you when they have jobs to be done? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's another nice question. Uh, you maintain contact with them. You maintain contact. The truth is, you are not necessarily going to be speaking with everybody in a company or any company. And you, if you're a vendor to a company, you don't necessarily have to speak with every single person. But there will be like one or two people that you are close to that you call from time to time. Sometimes people give corporate gifts. That's an interesting one. You have the money for corporate gifts. It's really interesting. You can. You can. In fact, it goes a long way, actually. You can spend the money. You actually need to spend the money. Not even if you can. You have to spend money to do that. If you can get corporate gifts, it goes a long way. Imagine giving out calendars, pens, and all whatnot. And whenever the guy wants to write something, he sees your name on the pen. They will always, <laughs> you will always remember. When something goes wrong, they want to call you. At least call that person that, uh, uh, that was his name again. Let me check his name on my pen. Okay, yeah, it's this guy, but please call him. Let him come and fix our bug. So uh, I think calling them constantly, calling clients constantly is the when I say constantly, I don't mean every okay. week. Just once in a while, you call. You can even yeah, you can even visit, pop in, say hello to you know one of the top. Um, if I say hello to everybody, please, not only the top people, greet everybody and go. Just try to maintain contact. Um, okay. that, those are the only two ways that um, yeah, that I know, of. and they are really effective. They're really effective. All right. But that doesn't stop them from calling other people to compel. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you for answering that clearly. All right. So what are common red flags to watch out for when onboarding new clients? So every one of us wants to bring in clients that will give us bits of and also help us and um, allow us to really be creative in this space and do something um, unique for them. But we need to also be guided because there are some, the fact that they have the money to pay, does not mean that um, they are the right fit clients for us. So what are common red flags that you have experienced and you want to share with us 
that we should watch out for when we are onboarding new clients? Okay. Um, this is sorry. I, I would like to ask, when you talk about the red flag, uh, can you just throw more light on that? Because I'm going to explain something I'll, from I'm the little to... experience I have regarding companies. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that um, by sh sharing a, a short story. So um, I had a client okay. out to me, um, I think to, during, I think December period last year. So it was a referral, so it was true referral. Mm. And on getting to the um, yes. site, so I'll call it a site, it's actually their home, so they wanted to work on their home. So on getting there, first and foremost, when I heard about the location of the house, I was like my, my optimism or my, <laughs> my, <laughs> how they call it now? My drive dropped. <laughs> Is it morale? So, <laughs> it dropped. Then when I when I went to, to visit the client, when I went to, for the to, to when I get to the site and I began to talk to the um, prospective client, the more the longer time I spent in their presence, my morale kept dropping, dropping. So by the time I was leaving that day. And I, w I promised to send them a, a proposal and their, a quote and all of that. I knew deep down inside my mind that I will not push to take that job. Because the, so, so some of the red flags that, that I found was they were not, they were not um, the kind of people. So by saying the kind of people that I want to work with. So they didn't, both um, the husband and the wife were not um, in agreement on a lot of things. That's one. And then they had a, they had a, mm -hmm. an elephant taste. Let me say, let me use that. So they had an elephant taste, but an, a kind of, let me say, an ant budget for what they want to do. So those are budget, okay. red flags. So you are more experienced than I am. You've worked with um, more corporate clients than I am. So I want you to tell us what are the possible red flags that you see that you watch out for too when we are attracting clients to do business with them. Okay, okay, I, I get what you mean. Um, it's it's really not any different where I am. It's pretty much the same thing. But what I would advise is, um, okay, fine. Budget is is key. It's very very important. I, I think that's one major uh, a factor that affects clients and designer. Budget is very 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 key. Of course, skill is important. It's good for designers to know what he's doing. But budget is um is um it's been a problem for a while. And oftentimes, like we usually teach, uh, we normally teach our students, oftentimes designers jump into things without necessarily getting the budget. So somewhere along the line, when the client is trying to reveal the budget, it now becomes um, uninteresting to you. You know, let me, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention, okay, let me just use figures. Let me just, you know, use figures. For example, let's assume, um, you you expecting hundred naira for something, okay. right? I know hundred naira is not going to buy you anything. <laughs> but let's assume you are expecting hundred naira for you know for a project, and then after you've given the client all the wonderful ideas, they now let you know that it's only five naira that they have. Now imagine when you have done a design, you've done a design, you've given them the design. They now tell you, ah, that's the budget I have. Uh, please, you have to use that budget and do this. And at that point, you some. The, there's nothing wrong in being desperate as a designer. Sometimes I could get desperate to do a particular project, not because of the money involved, but because it's something that we haven't done before and we really would like to do this. So sometimes we step down on budget to ensure we do it so that other clients will see what you know, we've done. But budget is key. That's, that's one thing. When you're talking with clients, you can tell where they are going. You know, like we always uh, uh, tell our students, try to suggest certain elements in a space for a client and see what their response is going to be. In fact, the very first thing that I will advise everybody to do before you embark on something, even though you have to be systematic about it, try and find out the budget. How serious are the clients, budget-wise? Mention a figure. It, well, let, sorry, don't mention okay, so a figure, please. Try and learn your cost rate. When you're, uh, when, let me ask on behalf of those listening to you, sorry? how do you find out this budget? Please. How do you find out the budget? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh, you have to understand costing, first and foremost. And normally what I do, what I do, 
if it's not, if it's a project that is not really very big, I could just ask a client, okay, what kind of space are you talking about? Is it two bedroom, three bedroom, so on and so forth? Now, because I have some knowledge of costing, what I do is that I'll take the three bedroom or four bedroom and do a brief costing with basic material and basic design, and then now give the client two or three budget options. What the budget is doing is to help you know if the person is serious. That's the truth. Somebody who wants to pick something, it, it's normal. The moment you hear a budget that aligns with what you have in your pocket, you respond. Yeah. But when the budget is too high, you walk away. That's the truth. When the budget is too high for a client, they walk away because they don't have, it because of pride. I think, I don't know whether I should say pride or they don't want to be ashamed of telling you that what they have cannot, cannot. you know, fit into what is given them. So they might just tell you that, they, you know, the famous, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows that. I will get back to you later. Very, very famous line. I'll get back to you later. And, and then that's it. Nobody gets back to you again. So, but, but it's good that they don't get back to you, that you embarking on a fruitless journey. When you've gotten to the end, you now realize that the budget cannot work. At that point, you may have become too desperate to go back. You now be saying, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me manage it for you. That's the worst thing that a designer should, should do. Don't accept something you know you're not be able to be back. Because truth is, when you don't do it well, when you don't do it well, the client is going to spoil your name beyond yes. your imagination. That's the truth. They are nice people, though. That's, you know, they are all nice people. I'm not saying anything bad, though. Please, though. Before they say they will not give you the evil job again. They are nice people. But if you don't do it well, the next person coming to fix what you've done the client will not hesitate to wash you in front of that person. That's normal. So if you know it's below what you can afford, please tell the client that it's not going to work. Just find a way, a very polite way of pushing the client to some other person who will be able to do that. He, they may see it as, you know, you being arrogant or something, but on the long run, they will realize that this particular person actually has a reputation to proceed. But you see, yes, and that's me, I can talk. So let me just, let me just uh, advise people to do something. For upcoming designers, it's okay for you to take certain risks. It's very, very okay. Take certain risks. Even if you feel that, because in the past, we've told our students, walk away from this, walk away from that. And then in the end, it feels as if we are pushing people away from flight. No, it, it doesn't matter. We also take risks sometimes. Take Certain risk. Even if you know that maybe the client's budget is really low, the only thing you can do is try to advise them how to embark on the project. Even if it means embarking in stages, don't ever drop quality. Don't drop quality of your material because of the budget that you have. No. The best thing to do is advise them. To... For example, right. they wanted to do tiling or something like that. That you know you advise against that and tell them to do painting instead. But just try to see how you can advise them to use their budget. Very, very important. <laughs> okay, so I'm laughing because your people here are making me laugh. So um Joy is here, um Mrs. Remy okay. is here, and Chiamatu is here. And they've been so Joy says you are boss of all Remy <laughs> 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 And um, <laughs> Shama is also, and she said she's sorry that she, yeah, and all of that. So that's why I, I was laughing. Thank you so much, Mr. Jim, for re breaking that down. That, that you. was Thank excellent. You. Thank you. Thank all right. You. So um, I know that you collaborate um, or partner with other businesses yeah. or clients to your designer. So I want to ask how um, yeah. have you, so I know how you attract them, which is, most, I know most of them are usually your students because you usually uh, um, encourage us. You encourage us to um, reach out to you and not run away projects because we, may, we don't have the experience to execute it. So we should reach out to you. You will um, mentor us through it. Yes. And I love that so much. I'm still, I'm still yet to, uh, <laughs> to come and catch it on that yet. All right. So, <laughs> so I, I know that's how... One, attract these um, partnerships and collaborations. So, but how do you do it without hurting your own brand? So without um, having to maybe settle cases, whether in or out of court, 
or having to burn bridges or maybe um, destroy relationships that you've had with other people? How have you been able to do this over the years? Okay, um, that's another nice question. It's actually a risk. You see what you just said now about you know burning bridges is is a very big risk. But um, but the truth is that you have to take that risk. That's just it. As a designer, there are certain projects that you come across and you find the client wanting you to do everything because they don't want to be picking or having three, four, five different contractors at once. They want one person to handle everything. It doesn't happen all the time, right? Let me, let me, let me use um, IT as an example. We are not IT specialists, you know. Okay. I'm wearing earphones, but that's just about it. I'm not an IT specialist. I cannot. <laughs> that's the only thing. I'm wearing video for finish. That's what I'm not an IT specialist. I don't know how their things work at all. I only know how interior design, you know, works. And well, fortunately, IT is part of it. The installations and all whatnot. So what happens is that during the course of work, we meet other contractors along the line, and from the level of work that they do and um, uh, the way the clients describe them or the kind of praises the client keeps on them, we try to reach out to them for partnership. Now, when we reach out to them, we discuss in detail. Normally, for an interior design project, nobody, nobody will call the IT specialist and say, okay, come and do IT work and also do interior design. No. But clients can call the interior designer and say, please, include the IT work as well. I don't know if you see the difference. The IT person is not yeah. coming to do your interior design work. But you can actually come in, do your interior design work, and incorporate IT work as part of what you're doing because it's also part of the installation. It's just like your electrical work. You understand? So it's something that you have to discuss with the person. Like I said, it's a very big risk. Um, one of the ways that we try to see how we can avoid getting to that point of burning bridges is to draft agreements. It's very, very important to draft agreements. We are human beings, and we are Nigerians. So we love to break rules a lot. That's just the case. We love breaking rules. And we love it. It's just something. We love breaking rules. Please give me this uh, uh, thing. I'll give it back tomorrow. By that tomorrow, you don't give the person back. In fact, one week, two weeks, three weeks, it doesn't give you back until you start fighting. So, you know, you have to draft agreement. Now, when you draft agreement, it, it's, um, it's something that keeps the other party in check. Not only does it keep the party in check, it also makes them understand that this person is serious. He is not here to joke around. He's serious. So it's not just word of mouth. Let's partner and do a project. No, you draft the agreement. Understand the level of partnership. Understand who is the, the front runner of the project. You have to agree and you sign. You understand? So oftentimes the, the mistake people make is that it's just word of mouth. I want you to come in and do such a project with me. The person comes in somewhere along the line. You find yourself complaining that this person is going behind you to discuss your client. And, and it happens a lot. So, um, one of the best ways I believe to combat it is draft agreement and get a very, very powerful lawyer on standby. <laughs> on standby. <laughs> well, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure yes. you haven't. Okay, so let's wait. Um, have you... No, we, have, we actually haven't had any need to. Good. No, no, we haven't. Uh, we haven't. So that's yeah, but it's just good to do that because we think, yeah, because the thing is, when you have the lawyer, when you draft agreement and have the lawyer, as human beings, right? Even for myself, if I, I love to follow rules. That's what makes it easier. That's why I seem to like corporate clients. Because there are rules. There are lots of rules. With private clients, there are no rules. There are no rules. It's more like, ah, come and handle this project. When you start the project, somewhere along the line, the client comes and says, ah, my wife is going to install the cabinet. Or my cousin is going to do the floor. Uh, my sister from... If my sister in the Lord is going to do the same, <laughs> and at the end of the day, you don't even know what you're doing again for the client. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny, but, but that's what happens. And it keeps happening because there are no rules. So the private clients enjoy the fact that they don't play by any rules. So they want to feel free. They love the ah, He's my friend. He's my person. I know him. Ah, Jill is a nice person. But there are no rules. But when you're dealing with corporate clients, there are rules. There is a time frame. And you are even told, I'm sure you know about um, how you pay, you know, money when you don't meet up the yeah. project. Right? right? You know yeah. about it, right? Very good. So these are things that will keep you on your toes. It's different. Private clients, 
it's just an open field. So it's more like the client, the private clients like to do, like I said, they are nice people. Though. Let me just greet everybody. They are nice people, but that that that's it. They they love when there are no rules. You just do things, you know, anyhow. So it's important to have rules. If you have a partnership, please stick to the rules. Draft an agreement. It doesn't matter whether the person is your friend or or whatnot. Draft an agreement. Whether it is your wife or your sister or your cousin, draft an agreement so that everybody knows what he or she is doing. And then we now hope it doesn't get to the point where you start calling each other names and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have um, just two questions to go and then we'll wrap up this interview. If you're watching and you've got any questions, yeah. please start dropping them in the comment section now so that I can share them uh, with Mr. Jean before he goes. All right, so um, this next question you've answered, but I want you to answer with your mouth. <laughs> you've answered from all the things you said to me, but I want you to ask your mouth. Are you team residential client or team corporate client? Okay. This one is a trap. This one is a trap. Look, uh, um, let me, let me, before I, Say which team I am. I, you know, I, I guess from everything I've said, you can tell that I'm more. I I enjoy corporate clients more than, more than private clients. Yes, and honestly, um, I, I like corporate clients because it, it's more straightforward. You win or you lose. That's it. There is no in between. You win or you lose. So there's nothing like, okay, you win just one aspect. You, you know, you win just one aspect of the project. And then you may, maybe a client calls you, come and do, this, do half of this one. And then the other company will come and do half. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. You win or you lose. That, that's how it works. And then the, the corporate client understands. You see, I'm actually team corporate, but I want to just explain why so that people don't misunderstand. The corporate clients understand that your services are to be paid for. Yeah. It's not free. Yes. Private clients yeah. don't understand that. Yeah. That's why a private client can tell you, ah, so uh, 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 can you do something? Let me see what it's going to look like. When you are done with the design, they'll tell you to send this to them. You can imagine. Send them the design. Something that something they are supposed to pay money for. And these are people who also work for musicians and they get paid. So why can't you get paid? Why don't they understand that it's consultancy? If I do a design for a client, yeah, it's consultancy. Yes. yes, until it gets to the construction aspect. So it's supposed to, we are supposed to, you know, break things into. It's not. It's, you know, all whatnot. That's private client. Now, having said that, you see, please let me just add one thing, please, for the upcoming designers, right? We are all upcoming. Yes. I'm also upcoming. Let's leave. Sorry. Now, for the ones who are much younger than, yeah, much younger than myself, right? You you should take okay. that risk. If what you enjoy is a, a private. If, if you enjoy private, please do private. I also do private. Don't get me wrong, because um, you know we do, we do. We just started doing kitchen, right? I also do private. The only thing, like I said, uh, we don't like about uh, private is usually there are no rules, so it becomes more difficult. And as an interior designer, if you don't have those principles to guide what you're doing, it becomes more difficult. That's just the truth. It becomes difficult. There's a reason the ceiling is a particular height. If you alter it, you should be able to justify it. Those are rules we have to stick with. Of course, and as an artist, you should be able to alter them a little bit, but anything you do should be justified. With the private clients, it's, it's, it's difficult. Even when a private client calls and says, you are going to handle this, my building. At the back of your mind, you know that you may not necessarily handle the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> you are going to handle the whole building. might just mean that you are going to handle 10%. Yes. Maybe that's what it means. But they don't tell you. So somewhere along the line, some other person comes in and says, ah, I can do this and so thing, though. The client strikes it off what they're supposed to do. I can do something, they strike it off what you're supposed to do. And it's still happening till tomorrow. Yeah. There are no rules. So the private client, uh, 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 more or less, for, uh, and that's why, I, I think that's why they quarrel a lot with um, designers. Yeah. I think so. I, I think that's why, you know, it always happens. For corporate, corporates like keeping it there, you know, they don't like that headache of this thing is going wrong. The corporate clients will want one person handle everything. If it goes wrong, we hold you responsible. Yes. That's how it works. If you do, if you don't get this thing right, we will hold your balance payment, which is maybe like uh, uh, between ten and uh, 
depending on the agreement they have with the client, they hold your balance payment until you get that thing done. That's how it works. But but for the private, private can tell you, keep working, keep working, keep working. <laughs> you use your money by the time you are done working. The private client will tell you, I don't like this thing that you don't know. And that's it. Too. And, and that's it. You can't get your money. I don't like what the, so what don't you like about what I've done? I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't what like it. I should put it. No, my wife, you know, so I just don't like it. Thank you. You know, so, so that's, that's the thing. It, it's interesting. You can work for any client that you want. Um, we still work for private, but we are more team corporates. You see how diplomatic I'm trying to be so that I don't offend anybody. <laughs> we are more team, uh, team we corporates. We that corporate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, another another question so, yeah. from my end before I begin to read the ones in the comments is um, mm -hmm. so um, due to yeah. the um, pandemic, this is a um, post coronavirus or COVID nineteen period. Um, a lot of um, services yeah. or business, um, processes have changed, and I'm sure it has affected your own business too. So this question is actually about the the Caliber Institute. You do training, life training, which is okay. um, one of the one of the best, if, you, if, I'm to, if I can say that, one of the best I've seen so far in Nigeria. A lot of people tell you, come and learn you. interior design. And when you get there, it is interior decorating their situation. Like, <laughs> so, uh, this is yeah. you're listening you. and, and you have such school, I'm begging you, please um, try not to do that. It's actually us in your brand. It's not, it's, I'm not trying to slight anybody or anything. If you know that what you're teaching is interior decorating, just say you're teaching interior decorating. Don't say you're an interior design school save um, the people who, are, who want to learn. All right, so my question is, what, is the, what are your plans concerning the institute now? How will you be admitting students going forward? How will you be delivering the training with this new um, change in okay. things are done? Yes. Um, the thing is, we, we actually work in towards online. Um, the reason we haven't run is because we're trying to See how we can make it as comprehensive as classwork. Yeah. The truth is, not everybody for, for, for interior design, not everybody enjoys learning I... online. People love class. There, there is just something about being in class. I can learn something online, don't get me wrong, but I think for other people, um, there's just something about coming to class and you know, there's that feeling that you can relate with. Uh, you can relate with the school better when you are seeing someone and you are asking questions directly. You know, why, why should I use red instead of blue? And the teacher answers you immediately that when it's online, you have to send the question and then some weeks after it is answered or something like that. So um, I, that's, that's the only challenge that we have. But we're already working towards it. Uh, because that's the only, the truth is, if, if people don't want to come because they are scared of the whole pandemic, there really isn't anything anybody can do. You just have to go online. That's it. There really isn't. For me, during the, during the um, I think during the lockdown, first two weeks into the lockdown, I had to do, learn some things online. I had to study some things online. Took up some courses. And, and it was not, in fact, I thank God that we had the uh, okay. lockdown. If not, I probably wouldn't have had Time. time. So I had time and I sat back and I learned something. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not, not everybody can learn through online platforms. Yeah. And we have to respect that because people assimilate at different levels. Yeah. You know, we are all very intelligent people. We are all very intelligent. It just depends on how you enjoy learning. That's just the truth. So we've noticed that even when students call and we ask them, we tell them that we are planning online. They, they, they always say ah, online that they're, they're not sure they can learn online. That's the truth. That they rather come to class. And we tell them pandemic, they say, yes, they will wear masks and come. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know, so I don't know if I'm going to be wearing masks to be you know, talking to class or something like that, but um, we're still working towards it. We haven't, uh, uh, we haven't launched we haven't launched yet, but we're definitely going on. All right. Okay, so um, this question is from Joy um, Igodike. Joy yeah. says, or Joy is asking, when are you going to have, <laughs> are you going to have that upgrade class for your whole student? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Remy, Remy, Remy was asking, Remy asked me oh. that same question sometimes. And, and I think that was like, I don't know, I think that was like two years ago, something like that. Remy asked me that question. 
She asked me first, I think four years ago. I said, no, very soon. She asked me again, I think like two years ago. I said, yeah, very soon. No, we're, we're actually working towards it. You know, it's, um, we're working towards it. And it's going to be very interesting. Honestly, it's also going to be emotional because um, those are uh, some of our very first students. You know, Joy, Remy, um, you know, so many of them. It's, it really is going to be emotional seeing them again. So I would love to um, also have class. And, you know, we all meet, but on a different level this time around. So, uh, sorry, sorry, what is it? So we're going to have a combination of reunion and then class together. Yes, 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 yes. No, we will. No, we will. We are working towards it. All right. So um, Chioma is asking, how do you handle clients that change their minds so often in the course of a project? Okay. Um, now, you know, we, we are explaining two different clients now, the corporate and the, and the private. Is she asking for both or? Well, She's um, asking for both. So, um, Choma, you're here listening. But uh, Choma, Choma is a kitchen expert. And I think she's asking for, for the reservation. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing. But I, I think she okay. will. Fine. So she's been, she's, she's been, I know she's a kitchen expert. So our clients are usually uh, are more of the residential clients. So maybe mm -hmm. you should answer from that angle. Okay. Um... That's another thing that we all have to, or we all battle with when dealing with private clients. Because, like I said earlier, for corporates, there are rules. Yeah. First things first, come have a meeting, you know, take, the, uh, 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 take a brief from the client, go back, create your design, come do your presentation, they like your work, they ask for bills, submit your bill. There's a process. But for the pri private clients, there really isn't a, there really isn't a straightforward process. Now, I advise designers to introduce some rules. Let me call them soft rules, not anything so serious that will scare the client, you know, and the client to run away. No, just introduce some rules. When you create a design, when you have an interesting design, because I noticed one thing, oftentimes uh, for some, some works that I've seen and some um, from what I've heard private clients say, most of the designers that they engage, they don't really give them that satisfaction that they want. So, so they are not convinced. Because they are not convinced, this is very, very important, because they are not convinced, they'll come out later and say they no longer want orange, they now want red. Or they don't want red, they now want blue. Because there was no philosophy guiding the design that you are doing. So I would advise Try and do a design, have a philosophy, have a story behind your design. Justify every single thing that you do. Don't leave any stone unturned. Cross all the T's, dot all the I's. When you do that, it's a lot easier. That's exactly what we do. When we're dealing with private clients, our designs, we have a story that we tell with our designs. So oftentimes, you find the clients sticking to the design because once they move away from the design, the story changes. So this is something that happens to designers a lot. When you are offering clients something and it feels as if it's not fully done. I'm not saying it's bad. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that it's not fully done in the sense that they don't have a full explanation why a design has to be like this. Remember, the private client is always listening to people outside. They, will, they listen to everybody. They, he's going out with the driver. He listens to the driver. The driver will even say, oh, we, there's somebody who can do your silly you know? listen. They, they listen to everybody. That's the truth. So if you don't give them something that is really very tight, it becomes difficult. When he listens to someone, he now comes back and says, wow, maybe the, my driver is right. So I don't think I should use green. Let me use blue. Why is he moving from green to blue? Because there was nothing. There was no story. There was no concept in what you were doing that you were offering them. So they can easily change it. There is no storyline. That's, that, that's, you know, that's one thing. Then another thing, again, I, I would suggest is when you're dealing with a client, um, when you present a design and you have a philosophy and you agree on the design that you are going to do, you have both agreed that's what you're going to do, whatever it is you have to do moving forward, please try and draft it and have the client sign. That's why we always 
that's why we always uh, uh, advise our students to whatever materials they want to use for a client, show the client the materials they need to do, or rather the materials they want to use from the onset. Let, let them know. If you want to use, let me, let me, let me mention a few uh, wooden materials, for example. Let's assume you want to use, um, you want to use a particular kind of wooden material. Let's say uh, uh, there's a famous one that's called cappuccino in the market. You want to use something like cappuccino in the market. Ensure that you show the client and sign off on it. It's very important. Okay. Have a good design. Have a philosophy behind your design. Have a story behind your design. So that the client cannot, once they buy into it, it becomes difficult changing the narrative. All right. Okay. Um, so that's all the questions. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Very okay. well. So um, I don't have any more questions in the chat comment right now. So um, to round up the session, okay, so to round up this, this session, you advise the upcoming uh, I don't agree that you're an upcoming, so please remove yourself from that category. Not so upcoming. So you advise <laughs> us the upcoming <laughs> to um, go for take more risks as we are begin as at this um, early stage in business one. Secondly, you said to make sure that we have the skills. So get trained, work on your skill because that is what you need first before going to look for customers in the first place. So what other advice do you have apart from these two as we close this um, particular interview? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's funny. I'm going to say this one coming from some... I'm an introvert. I'm not really a very big fan of going out, but I have to start going out because it's very, very important to socialize. Meet people. You know, meet more people. Um, figure out how social media works. I'm not a guru in that one. Maybe, you know, maybe someone can, maybe you can teach me that I'm not a guru in that one. But social media is key. But above all things, this year, I keep saying this, above all things, it's important to, to learn or build yourself. Keep building yourself. Very, very, very important. Because truth is, people keep saying that there are no jobs. That's not true. Wow. It's not true. There are jobs. There are, yeah, there are jobs. But, but the thing is, the thing, there are jobs. But the thing is, the competition is, is really high, even for private clients. When they are calling you, remember that the difference between the private clients and corporate clients. When corporates want to call, they call so many people at the same time, right? And then one person wins. Yeah, very simple and straightforward. You know, it's smooth. When you're dealing with private, private will call different people at the same time. One person wins, and they are still calling people. They are not done, though. even when you have won. <laughs> even when you won, they are still calling people. Even when you want, even when they call you to do something, they are still calling people, listening to them, you know, you know, all what So you have to build yourself. It's very, very important. You have to love what you're doing. I always tell people, I am very passionate about interior design. I am extremely passionate about it. So when I'm not doing anything, I like to start creating it. Sometimes I could, you know, go to the market, find out new materials. I could uh, go online and just, or I could just open my system and start designing something because I'm trying to build myself. Why? It's, so, it's important that for every design you do, for every design you do, and in fact, for every project you do, always know one thing. You could, you, you could have done it better. Yeah. It's very, very important to know this. There is no perfect design. When you're done with something, always study and ask yourself, what didn't I do well? Let me try and do it better next time. You will be surprised. I tell you what, there is nothing that you learn today that is a waste. Building yourself, equipping yourself, is never a waste. Because you will come across every interior designer who is striving to get clients. You will get, mark my words, you will get clients. That is the truth. The problem is not even getting clients. The problem now is how to ensure that you, you impress the clients. It's not just getting them. How do you impress them? People will call you. Clients will call you. So please, never stop building yourself. Whether projects are coming or they're not coming the way you want, it doesn't matter. In fact, when the projects are not coming, use that period and build yourself because they will come. The mistake people make most times is that when the project is not coming, they, you know, people are about losing hope and thinking, oh, no, what, what am I going to do with the project? Nothing is coming. And then you now stay stagnant until when the thing comes, you're not able to get it. That's the problem. So keep building yourself. Build, in fact, beyond social media, it's this skill. I will always say the skill is very, very important know what you are doing. There will come a time where somebody who doesn't really know that well what he's doing, but he has a lot of contacts, will contact you 
that's the truth. If you are very good at what you do, you'll be surprised that at some point, when you are good at what you do and you are showing people that you are good, people will be calling you. It doesn't matter. Even if you go and chase a project and, and they are not serious, it doesn't matter. Just keep trying. Keep trying until you get where you're going. Nothing is, nothing is a waste. All right. So when you say that there are jobs outside, even in this time, yes. this um, post-corona, yes. there are yes. jobs outside. Yes, yes there are. Jobs. Yes. Do you know why? No, no. You know what? Okay. Let me, let me. People are still doing projects till tomorrow. They are still building houses. They are still doing interior work. Okay. They so are we still are doing at, projects. At, In fact, we were supposed to start. The corporate uh, clients now. Sorry? Because of the social distancing yes. and that, are, do they still, as in, are they still going? Okay. For example, before the lockdown, I had to um, yes. do projects that we were bidding and up until now they are still on hold because of corona so i'm asking i know for residential a lot of people a lot of the jobs i've done so far have been for residential clients so i know that some people are going ahead to do what they want to do but what about the corporate um, clients or the corporate sector are they also mm -hmm. still ahead with projects building mm -hmm. projects and all of that change from yes. their offices yes okay. yes yes yeah. i'm telling you yes they are the thing is the thing is not everybody Okay, um, I'm looking for the example that I will give. Um, we have it. We are supposed to start. There's a project we are supposed to start at, to do at Tebado, right? So, um, but the only thing that is delayed now is uh, it, I'm, we're likely to start in about two weeks, okay. right? That's the final phase of something that we are doing over there. Now, not only that, there are other things that are in the pipeline that the clients are getting ready. Not necessarily going to give it to us or they'll give it to some other person, but we, we are bidding for the same thing. And they are going to start. Whoever wins the project is going to handle it. So the only thing is, the only thing is, not every client is, some clients are still surveying to know what um, a, 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 a probably exchange rate is going to be, like whether it's going to affect them or, or affect their uh, sort of income or something like that. Not that they have stopped it. They are still working. People are still working. Because true this is, if they don't do business, if they don't do business, if you have to expand the office, you have to expand the office. Not, it's not because of the whole pandemic you decided, you know what, I decided not to expand my office because of the pandemic. No, you have to expand the office. You have to do business. We will do business. That's, that's normal. Clients will still do business. People who are building are still building. The only thing is that they have slowed down to watch and see, you know, if they are going to, if there's going to be another lockdown. So they don't go and commit contractors that give them money to start and then the lockdown hits them. Not that they're not they are, that's the truth. And and they will keep doing people will keep doing projects no matter what. Even if they scale down and say, okay, we cannot do something of this magnitude. Let's scale it down a little bit. But but they won't stop. They will keep doing. You know, they will keep doing. Please anybody that is out there, you, you will get an opportunity. Everybody will get that chance to do something. It's normal like I always tell my students, but it's important to build yourself. You will look. You no matter how good you are, you can be better. Yes, true. true. Very very important. All right. Thank you so much, um, Architect Jean. It has been a very 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 lovely session with you. We spent over one hour, so we have yeah, to bring this to a close. So oh, really, I, I, I think it was five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> because I told you now that in your center, in, inside of you is a <laughs> you just you like this. <laughs> so we can't wait to. <laughs> on a, on a, what's a future event that we might have and we are also looking forward to hearing the yes. um, great things that you're doing both at Space Caliber and the Caliber Institute together also. Thank you so much sir and if there are more questions so because thank you, thank you very much. supposed to be on Friday but we're holding it today so I'm still going to play this again on Friday so if we've got more questions I'll okay. you. and um, or since you're already in the, in the group so I'll just um I will tag you. So when you when you receive a notification that you're tagged, just please help us check on those questions, answer them for okay. watch the replay. Right. Thank you so much, sir. Sure, I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please stay safe, <laughs> even with all your. <laughs> Thank all you very much. Stay safe too. I wish you the best. Uh, <laughs> and uh, hello to uh, Remy, Joy, everybody. Thank you very much. I really so, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.
So uh, Mr. Mrs. Remy, he's saying hello. Joy, he's saying hello. Choma, he's saying hello. Uh, they are all saying hello to you too. So we're looking forward to the um, to the upgrade class that um, you're planning. Yes, yes, sir. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Bye yes, for sir. now, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this live interview. It has been a very, very lovely session. Thank you for, for those who joined in at the previous live. Um, Akia, me, and um, I think Mrs. Remy, too, joined me. Thank you for coming back to join me on this one. Uh, so let me just do a roll call of all those who joined me live. Thank you, Akia, me. Thank you, Mrs. Remy. Thank you, Abike Ola Shodunke. Choma, thank you so much. All the way from Asaba, thank you. Um, Auntie Joy, thank you so much. Um, who else again joined in? I think that's all. Um, hey, Felix Essay, thank you for joining in. We are actually rounding up right now. So um, the replay will be up on Friday at the previously scheduled time for his own session. So check back on Friday um, in the evening, or maybe I'll just post it in the morning so that everybody, <laughs> everybody, can, uh, everybody can watch it all through Friday and drop their questions. So Mr. Jean has agreed to still be here in the group to answer your questions. So whether you're watching it live or you're watching the replay, go ahead to ask your questions. He will get them and reply to your questions also. All right, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Mrs. Remy. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. We're waiting for our master class. Yes, he will. I hope that is for Mr. Jean. So Mr. Jean knows that we need that particular upgrade uh, master class. Someone else joined in. I can't see his name right now. Thank you also. You um, commented nice session. Thank you for also joining in live. All right, guys, we've got to go now. I'll see you on um, on Saturday. So Saturday, Patience is coming live with me on Saturday by 7 p.m. And then we'll, find, we'll round up this finally on Sunday with um, Polakemi at 7 p.m. too. On Today, we'll also be coming to talk about attracting and retaining paying clients consistently in your business all right guys have a lovely lovely wednesday and be good stay safe out there bye for now